Hey everybody, this is Adam Kokash here in Las Vegas for Freedom Fest. I'm very honored tonight to be joined by Brianna Bundy and Lynn Ulbricht. And these two women are both in a position where they're doing an incredible job supporting activists and their families who are behind bars right now. So uh, Lynn, if you would first please give us, for the people who don't know anything about your son's story, just uh, a quick summary of, of Ross's situation right now. Yeah, Ross uh, is a totally peaceful person with no priors and is serving a double life sentence plus 40 years for all nonviolent charges associated with his involvement in the Silk Road website, which was an online um, marketplace that was the site of voluntary free market interaction with very few restrictions. There were some restrictions that um, were considered victimizing, such as child pornography, it was not allowed. Stolen property, not allowed. But it was an open market and it wasn't closely regulated, but there were rules. And, um, but there, and illegal drugs were allowed because it was considered a free choice. No victim, no crime. And um, Ross was not convicted of actually selling, he was convicted of, and there's questions about the trial, but that's complicated. Um, but he was convicted of hosting a site where other people did these things. And for that, he is serving a double life sentence in a maximum security prison with violent people in there, uh, even though Ross is a completely nonviolent person. And Brianna, your husband Mel is in jail right now awaiting trial. Could you give us a background on that, please? Um, yeah, my husband is in jail for the 2014 Bundy Ranch where um, the government converged on our family in an army and terrorized the community for a number of weeks before the public came to our aid um, to protest the actions of the federal government and the lack of action by our local sheriff's department and emergency personnel in our area. Um, 2014 ended peacefully with no physical violence taking place on the side of the protesters and we went about our business and moved about freely for well over 700 days before the federal government um, Decided to up. yeah, decided to indict the men and bring small militaries to to gather these 19 defendants up, and they've sat detained for the last 18 months without pretrial release and without the capabilities of preparing for their trial, even being able to view the the discovery, which is the evidence used against them in court, and ultimately being blocked an entire defense. They're not even allowed to bring a defense to court. So we're just uh, waiting for our trial date. My husband cur currently doesn't even have a trial date set, so. What I wanna make clear about these cases for people who aren't familiar with the crimes of the American federal government is that we have a disturbing trend today of political prisoners, people who are in jail for crimes that threaten government's power, not crimes that have actually hurt anybody. And what we have in these cases are really offensive examples, but there are many like them. And there are a lot of people in jail right now who need your help. In the case with the Bundys, it's 19 who are still facing various legal challenges. In Ross's case, we have someone who's got a life sentence and is in a really precarious position where all the support that he gets from the outside is huge. We like to think of America as the land of the free and all the other you know, BS platitudes that they wanna throw at us, but the reality is that this government is willing to hurt people to maintain its political power, and it's absolutely critical that not only do we raise awareness about these cases so people can learn the lessons of them and understand the reality of the nature of government, but also that we alleviate the suffering of the people who are hurting because of government's overreach, because government is willing to hurt people to preserve its power. So for those of you who know my story, I was a political prisoner very briefly myself. I did four months in jail in DC and I can tell you from even that short experience that the support from the outside to have uh, amazing women like this standing behind you, to have family standing behind you, to have supporters, to have people donating to know that uh, you know your, your mother when she's fighting for you on the outside, that she's taken care of and supported, that your family, that your kids when you go to jail are being 
being taken care of and supported. I mean, it is huge. As you may have heard, if we don't hang together, we hang separately. And right now, there are a lot of people hanging unnecessarily because they don't have the support and attention that their cases deserve. So, uh, Brianna, if you would, you know, tell us a little bit about what what Mel and, and the other gentleman he's incarcerated with have dealt with and, and what kind of support you've had and what's been appreciated. Um, it's just been really a struggle. You know, my my baby was two months old when my husband was taken. We also had a five-year-old, um, a six-year-old, a seven-year-old, and an eight-year-old, or nine-year-old. So it that's what my husband worries about the most, is his children are growing. He hasn't had an opportunity to bond, especially with, with the baby, and you miss milestones. So that's incredibly difficult. Um, but having letters from all over the country pour in of people, other people's little children and other parents and grandparents saying that they support him and they're they're proud of him and thank you for giving their family hope in America again and in mankind. Thank you for standing up for the Constitution and especially a lot of them remind them like thank you for bringing prayer back into our home because we've remembered how to pray and um, another thing that really helps them are the visits and I really want to challenge people this is what I think so many don't understand there are millions of men and women trapped inside prisons all over this country and they may be hundreds and hundreds of miles away from their family if you are in federal prison they can contract you into any facility in the country you may not have family that is nearby or has the financial capabilities of getting there to see you and these small little pieces of the outside world coming in give these men so and women so much hope so if you can go to the facility go in I mean a lot of places you have to be on a list um, by that inmate so you can ask for letters and write to people and find out who needs a visitor but a lot of these facilities are just open to the public you can just walk in and ask to see anyone that hasn't gotten a, a visit lately I challenge you to do that because some people my husband sits in a prison with men that have not had a visitor in 6 to 13 years and they need the support all whatever they've been convicted of completely aside it, it is a living hell and it it does a lot for these men and particularly with the situation with the can we say bundy gang is that the bundy family. the bundy family <laughs> The Bundy family and their supporters and all of the men who are behind bars with them right now, they really are standing for you. And when you stand with them behind bars, it gives them a lot of courage when, and, and I, I, you know, I have to like really, you know, kneel down before a lot of them to say like, I took a plea deal because I was bullied into a corner and I let the federal government do that to me. These guys are saying, no, please, they've been bullied, they've been offered plea deals. And it's because of that support. I mean, can you imagine if, like if there's nothing, if there's nothing on the outside, right. they would not be in a position to stand up the way they are legally. And so this is something that's an investment in your freedom. So Lynn, I know with, with Ross, he's had uh, you know, a huge amount of support on the internet. A lot of people write him letters. W what has been most helpful for you on the outside too, especially uh, advocating for him? Well, of course, all the support. We've also had a lot of financial support, which has actually made it possible for us to get this far, and we will continue to fight this, and that and that has helped us do that. But it's really become a bigger uh, fight as well. And I, I really want to say that I think us, we two here, exemplify how we come very different cases, very different people, and we both have very common experiences. It. It, we show how the government is overreaching and, and they are putting into prisons thousands and thousands of people and it's become a money-making, power-grabbing industrial complex that is metastasizing um, rapidly and is very concerning and it, it puts us all in peril the entire criminal justice system and how it's operating now. It's un-American, it's um, becoming a monster. And 
I didn't realize it until, and you don't realize it really until you actually experience it yourself and you see them in action firsthand. And I was shocked. I, I, I just couldn't believe this was my country. And you know, you say the land of the free, it's been hijacked. And this is something that you, it's easy to forget people in prison. I, I never thought about it before Ross was arrested, but it is a serious issue. It's a, it's a human rights violation. It's a national disgrace. And the fact that we incarcerate uh, more people than any other country on the planet is, is just appalling. And it needs to stop. It needs to be corrected and rolled back. And it's going to take pushback because it's, it's profiting a lot of people. It's a jobs program for a lot of people. It's profiting all kinds of, of um, interests. And the drug war and the criminal justice system is going to be something that they're not going to want to roll back on. It's going to take pushback. And it, it, it's, a, it's really about all our freedom because anyone can fall victim to this. And if you start looking into it, you'll see that people are in cages for things that you, you just won't believe it and go, this is my country, and it's, it's frightening. And so, you know, it, it, even though we're very different and the cases are very different, it boils down to the same thing. And the more you learn about it, the more um, you see that we are at a crossroads in history here. We are at a tipping point in history. And we've got to decide pretty fast here, because things are moving very quickly, how we want to go in the future. Do we want to have a free country? Do we want to have individual rights that are uh, and protections, or, or or not? Because it's going to be more government expansion and intrusion and control, or it's going to go the way of freedom and innovation and individual liberty. And we have to make that decision. These kinds of cases are the critical pressure points, and mm -hmm. when we can stand with the people who are standing up at these critical points it really does make a big difference in the policy that affects your life and your freedom. So I wouldn't be bringing you these difficult stories and these tough cases if I didn't have at least an invitation for you to do something about it. So I'm really excited with this video to be launching activistsunderfire.com. And it's a very simple idea for a website where we can show people what they can do to help activists who are under fire from the government, whether it's unjust incarceration, they're facing prosecution, or any other kind of legal harassment, but especially for the people behind bars who are making sacrifices to fight for your freedom and the future of this country, and really the f future of freedom for all of humanity. So please, we'll, we will, uh, by the time we get this video, we will have activistsunderfire.com live with information about the Bundy family and all the things that you can do to help them, as well as Ross Ulbricht and Lynn Ulbricht and their contact information, and a place for you to post information about any other people who you think deserve this kind of support, who need letters written to them in jail, anything we can do to alleviate the pain caused by government and move humanity towards more free society. So please check it out and uh, support this effort. Support anybody who's behind bars who needs that kind of help. So check it out, activistsunderfire.com. Thank you very much. By the way, hold on, before you cut this, just so you know, hey, that this is a phone call from jail that Brianna is taking for, for this. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you don't want to let those we, go by. We certainly appreciate yeah. a, a very appropriate interruption. Yeah, thank she you. can't call him back. <laughs> it's a, yeah. Thanks for being a part of this, Lennon. Thank yeah. you, Brianna, thank you, and Adam. thank you for thank watching you so and for sharing this video. It's an honor. But I hope you see the time you're doing behind bars as an investment in freedom, mm -hmm. and I hope that gives you some comfort for uh, for any moments that you have of, of despair in there to know that there are people out here who appreciate that yes, investment, absolutely. even when you don't feel it in there. Yeah, yeah it's, you know, it's been hard, and obviously, but you know, one thing that to get us through is knowing that there are people that are uh, you know, paying attention and, and beginning to uh, investigate and then uh, take action. And, and I, hey, it gives us a lot of comfort knowing you guys are out there. Absolutely. Mel. But we're going to be with you till this is resolved. Hey. Hey Mel, this is this is Dean Ryan. I just want to let you know we are putting this story back into the national conversation on the mainstream and the independent media level. So uh, don't you guys worry. We are recapturing the narrative of the story that really needs to be told appropriately and not from a, a CIA-controlled mainstream media perspective.